It's Wednesday, January 19, uh, 21st, 2009. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, as you know, Barack Obama was sworn in as president yesterday. Um, this was something I watched some of the um, some of the speeches and I thought the speeches were amazing. Uh, the Episcopal uh, priest who delivered the uh, invocation was really good. Uh, there were others. There was uh, another preacher that gave a really good speech that I liked. Um, I don't remember his name. Of course, Barack Obama's speech was very nice. Um, and, you know, I find myself wanting to believe in Obama. Um, I really do. Um, I never believed I would see an African-American president of the United States. And so, you know, I guess, like a lot of other people, I was surprised by this and uh, very glad to see it. I mean, if Ron Paul wasn't going to win, I guess Barack Obama, or, you know, if Ron Paul, Dennis Kucinich, or Mike Gravel wasn't going to win, if one of the political stooges was going to win, I guess Barack Obama is the best one because symbolically he represents something new in America. And, you know, this inauguration was uh, an amazing event. So many inspiring people, uh, you know, and the symbolism of it was amazing. Uh, I really felt like maybe this is a beginning of something new in America. You know, I'd really like to believe that. But, you know, I'm not going to give up on Obama yet, but I really am disturbed by a few things. And, uh, you know, one of the many things that is disturbing, besides all of Barack Obama's appointments so far, uh, to me is the fact that he initially, instead of the Episcopal, Episcopal preacher who is gay, had asked a uh, preacher who is openly uh, anti-gay. And only after people uh, protested did he allow, the, uh, you know, did he take this guy off, this bigot, and put on the Episcopal preacher, uh, so, or priest. And then his speech wasn't broadcast by HBO, which is kind of disturbing to me. I don't, I don't like that. Uh, and not only that, but there's the fact that this inauguration was the most expensive inauguration in history. Um, it cost $170 million. Okay, Just think about that for a second. This is one day. Uh, you know, and it cost... 170 million dollars for Barack Obama to get up and put his hand on a Bible and uh, swear to a few things. 170 million dollars, and almost all of it was paid by guess who? The Wall Street tycoons from Bear Stearns and uh, Morgan Stanley and uh, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase and. Uh, uh, Goldman Sachs, right? Goldman Sachs. There, you should remember that name. These people are criminals. They're the ones that just got the Wall Street bailout, okay? And the ones that stand to get more bailouts in the coming weeks and months from Bar Barack Obama, they gave him $170 million for this thing. And it was worth every penny, I think, because there was so much that happened and it was so inspiring and and I was really starting to get on the bandwagon when I heard some of these speeches and I started thinking, could this it really be it? Could this really be change? Could this really be the start of something new in America? Uh, I, man, I would like to believe that, but uh, I just don't know. I mean, uh, Obama has already, in response to the shocking brutality and war crimes of Israel, in attacking the civilian population of Gaza, in attacking UN facilities repeatedly, okay, repeatedly attacking UN facilities, hospitals, uh, hospitals, 
children's hospitals with white phosphorus and dime explosives which cause people to be split in half and legs and arms to be amputated. Uh, just horrific in injuries. After all of this and the condemnation of the world community and, and everyone who was able to actually see what was going on was shocked and appalled by what happened. Of course, we don't get that here because we don't get to see what happened. We don't get it on our news and we aren't told the truth on television, so we're not so shocked yet. But believe me, we're in the dark. Everyone else in the world pretty much knows what's going on, and they are horrified and shocked and angry. And you know what Barack Obama said? He said, if someone was shooting rockets at my little girls, I would want something to be done to stop it. That was his idea. I mean, of course he was talking about the eight uh, Israelis that have been killed. He wasn't talking about the 400 Palestinian children who've been killed. I mean, what about them? You know, what about if, if uh, Israel was doing that to your daughters, would you want Israel to stop? I don't know. I mean, it, it seems like uh, there's such a double standard and such hypocrisy here. Uh, and, you know, just remember... Uh, if you if you wear a uniform, it does not make you any different than anybody else. You cannot commit terrorist acts with impunity just because you're wearing a patch on your arm. It doesn't make it any different. Okay, um, when you set up a state and say this state is for white Baptists, and then all the other people start getting angry, you can call them terrorists if you want. But, uh, you know, I'm not buying it. And fewer and fewer people in the world, a rapidly diminishing minority, is buying the claims of the exclusively Jewish ethnocracy, which is installed in uh, Palestine, calling itself Israel. You know, this, this state that is the wrecking ball of the the U.S. world empire in the Middle East. That's all it is. Uh, you know, few, fewer and fewer people are buying that, and Barack Obama is. So that's very disturbing to me. But, uh, you know, like, like I said, Israel is a tool of the United States. Now, they want to pretend like they're in control of the United States. I'm sure, yeah, that works for them. And it works for us, too. You know, the American leaders... They don't want to be responsible for what we're doing in the Middle East. You know, when we prop up all the Arab regimes that are oppressing people and we prop up Israel with billions of dollars a year to wreck up the whole place and make sure it stays, you know, conveniently weakened for American dominance, they don't want to be responsible for that. And Israel does. They want to claim responsibility. The, the people behind the scenes in America who are pulling the strings on our politicians who are pulling the strings on Israel are perfectly happy for us to believe that it's the Jews that have taken over and all this, you know. The, the people at the top, some of them might be Jewish, but I guarantee you they're not all Jewish. They are all, however, immensely wealthy and powerful and to them you know race and religion and all this stuff that's kids that's child's play they don't care about all that crap all they care about is money you know they're not out for the Jewish people they're not out for the American people they're not out for white people or black people or anybody I mean it doesn't matter they're not out for their people they're out for themselves and they are controlling Israel and the people the propagandists for Israel are controlling our politicians and so we have no idea what's going on we can argue well it's us it's them but you know it makes no sense to me for Israel to be controlling America because we're giving them the money we can take it away at any time but we don't because they're doing what we want them to do and we've got to stop it because it's genocide and it's not what America was supposed to be. Thanks for watching.